Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, back once again with another Dungeons & Dragons character conversion in the Fallen Gods series. If you are new to this channel, this series, Character Conversion, covers, well, turning characters from different fictional works into a playable character in Dungeons & Dragons. Any character, from a book, from a movie, TV show, whatever. And if you are familiar with my channel, you know that I have done Dungeons & Dragons in PCs into playable characters in the past with Archon the Cruel, Torogar Steelfist, and Cruel. In this little mini-series, we are taking the gods of the Forgotten Realms and turning them into playable characters. This whole series started out with the question of can a warlock be their own patron? Or a cleric be their own deity? We are continuing this series with Malar, the god of the hunt. And not the hunt that you're normally used to, where you go out and hunt for food. No, no, no. Malar would be the god that poachers pray to. That's right. Malar is the god of the thrill of the hunt. His whole thing is to kill for the joy of it. He is a god of slaughter. Of blood. And, funnily enough, lycanthropes. Anyway, as always with character conversion, we start off with our stats using the point by system. Strength and constitution are going to be our highest stats at a 14, followed by dexterity and wisdom both at 13. Charisma and intelligence are going to be our lower stats, if not our dump stat. Moving on to our race, nothing really fits better than a tabaxi, in my opinion. Just for the fact that he is shown as a feline-esque individual. And he does have those claws. So, yeah, we kind of need that cut claws ability. So we're going to go ahead and just go with Tabaxi. Now, we get two stats, a plus two to one of our stats, and a plus one to another. So let's go with plus two to our dexterity, and plus one to our constitution. We get a speed of 30 feet, and also a climbing speed of 20 feet. We have Dark Vision, the Feline Agility, which doubles our speed for... A period of time. The Cat Claws ability, which gives us an unarmed attack that is, well, a good unarmed attack. We get proficiencies in perception and stealth for languages. Common and Abyssal seem to be a good fit. For background, we are using the Expropriated One from Compendium of True Evil. Created by Goblin Inc. Press. Um, recently, I haven't been putting the uh, link to it in the description because I've been using up all that space for the story. Uh, comment section. I'll be putting it in the comment section. If it's not in the description, it's going to be in the comment section. Alright, we got that through. Let's continue. For proficiencies, we're going to grab Persuasion. For tools, Leatherworker's tools and Woodcarver's tools seem to be the better fits. For feature, we get Name Drop. The expropriated one is sort of like a folk hero 
though the more evil version. This is the well-known villain, if you will. I kind of like the compendium of true evil, to be perfectly honest. I mean, it's not well written. There are some flaws. M mostly just uh, spelling <laughs> and sentence structure. But it's still pretty good stuff. Anyway, moving on, we are going with Barbarian for our starting class. We'll get a d12 for our hit die, and our starting hit points is going to be 12 plus our constitution modifier. So a nice hardy 14 to start out if we have a plus 2 to our constitution. For our skills, grab Intimidation and Perception. We get the Rage and Unarmored Defense, which thanks to a plus two in each of those categories for our Dexterity and Constitution modifiers, we have a nice 14 AC. I mean, that doesn't quite beat a Paladin's D AC when it gets to start out with some nice armor. But it's still relatively good AC. Moving on, we are multi-classing straight away into Cleric. If you were to worship Malar as a character, you would be taking the Nature Domain, because Malar is considered a god of nature. An evil nature god, mind you, but a god of nature nonetheless. For your domain spells, you'll get Animal Friendship and Speak with Animals. You get the feature Acolyte of Nature, which gives you the Animal Handling skill as a proficiency. And you also get Bonus Proficiency in Heavy Armor, which isn't necessary for Melar. In fact, that would actually be a detriment to him. Level 2 Barbarians get a Reckless Attack and Danger Sense. Multiclassing once again, we are going into Rogue. I normally don't multi-class into three different classes, but Malar actually fits this very well. Since he takes joy in hunting things, it makes sense to have a Rogue to better hunt. You get proficiencies in Thief's Tools and the Stealth skill. For your expertise, grab Stealth and Athletics. You get the Sneak Attack feature and Thieves Cat. Level 2 Clerics get Div General Divinity. You have Turn Undead and Nature's Own Charm Animals and Plants. No, we are going into Barbarian Level 3. Now, there are two primal paths that I want you to consider. The first one comes from the Compendium of True Evil. The Path of the Blood Rager, which gives you blood, blood rage. Getting my tongue tied here. This will give you some extra power with your attacks. Now, alternatively, if you do not like the Compendium of True Evil, you could also go with Path of the Beast, which gives you the feature Form of the Beast. Moving on to Rogue Level 2, we get Cunning Action. Level 3 rogues get a roguish archetype. We're going with the scout, which gives us the skirmisher and survivalist features. Level 4 barbarians get an ability score improvement. We're going to increase strength and intelligence each by one, which will round off our intelligence. Level 5 Barbarians will get extra attack and fast movement, which will increase our movement by 10 feet. This also works with our climbing speed and swimming speed if we have it. And flying speed, 
but that's not important. Skipping on ahead to level 6 of Barbarians. If you went with the Blood Ranger path, you get Sanguine Determination. And if you went for the Path of the Beast, you get the Bestial Soul feature. And to end things off, we're going with level 4 Rogues. And we're getting the Mobile Feet, which will increase our movement speed by another 10. Just some added notes before we end the video. Malon's dar dogma was to spread the curse of lycanthropy. So I would consider playing Malon as a loop gar lycanthrope. Uh, if your group runs the sanity ability score, uh, please know that Malar is quite the opposite of sane. So, don't have that stat very high. Now, you may notice that we have been increasing our speed quite well. After gaining the mobile feat, your walking speed is 50. Thanks to your feline agility, that's 100 feet. And thanks to the skirmisher's reactionary movement, that's a minimum of 125 feet in a single round. That is not including spells like haste or anything else that might increase your movement speed. Malar is going to be one fast player. Not flash levels fast, but it's still going to be insane. You could practically go in, slash at your foe, leave, and they have no idea what hit them. You can practically torment your opponents. And I must say, that is one evil character. I do hope you enjoyed, my dear viewers. Until next time, this has been Drehan, and I am offline.